다들 안녕. Boy, it feels like I have not been here on Korean from Zero for such a long time. But that makes me even more excited to share with you what I've prepared for this lesson today. Because looking back at the videos that we've made together with Korean from Zero, I feel like I haven't really delved into very hardcore grammar and things like that. So that's what we're gonna do today. So let's get started. The concept that I want to talk about today is that of active versus inactive verbs. It basically means that active verbs are those who explicitly do something with an object or on an object. The subject of the sentence exerts the action of the verb onto the object actively. <laughs> but with inactive verbs, subject is not necessarily doing the verb and the verb is not necessarily actually doing some sort of action onto the object. Their relationship is a little different. So to paint a clearer picture for you guys, Korean from Zero, book number two, has a very useful and clear lesson, number 12, on page 145. See, I've even made myself some notes here, active and inactive. This lesson talks about hada versus dueda verbs. So the examples here in the Korean from Zero book, when you have a verb that deals with preparations of something or by someone, and you can say it in two different ways. You can say 준비하다 and 준비되다. The difference between these verbs is that 준비하다 is actually an active verb and 준비되다 is inactive. So this textbook has an example of two sentences that say I prepared dinner and then dinner has been prepared or was prepared. When we have a simple sentence of I prepared dinner, in Korean it would be I, 나, or depending on how formal you are. 식사, dinner. 준비하다, 준비했어요. But we're missing something here. We're missing particles. So, 나 would have a 는 particle because, well, it's a subject. So, 나는 or 저는. And then 식사 gets a little bit tricky because, well, do we use the 을, object marking particle or do we use the 이가 as an object marking particle in this sentence? Well, this is where the difference between active and inactive verbs comes in. The difference is between how do we mark the object that the action is being taken upon. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that, but you know what I mean. So with jumbihada, because the action is being directly done to the object, it is going to be an object. So it's going to have the de in this case, ending. So in the end, the sentence is going to sound like this. 나는 식사를 준비했어요. I, dinner, prepared. Done. But then, when using 준비되다, we can say that dinner has been prepared. So we can say 식사 준비됐어요. But what object marking particle do we use? Logically, if we used 을, in the previous one, we should use 이가 in this one. And yes, it is true, we use 이가 in the sentence. So it ends up being 식사가 준비됐어요. And this is basically the major difference between active and inactive verbs in terms of sentence structure. Korean from Zero actually provides a very good explanation. This is their own system of kind of understanding how to mark objects either with ul, or iga. So it is on page 146 and it's called Can You Verb It? There's a little diagram here and then there's explanation and then examples on the next page. Those of you who have Korean from Zero textbook number two, head over to page 146 and check it out. Those of you who don't, unfortunately there isn't a free PDF available for book number two, but I will try to elaborate on this rule, kind of, sort of, in the description box, so make sure to check that out. So I'm not going to talk much about this rule because you guys already have access to it, either through this textbook or the information that I'll put in the description box. What I want to talk about is kind of my own little system that I came up with to understand how to mark objects in certain sentences. I'm not saying that the system that Korean from Zero uses is wrong. In no way I'm saying that. I just really want to provide you guys with as many resources as I can so that if a certain explanation doesn't work for you, maybe another one will or vice versa. So yeah, the way I think about subject or object marking particles is in a term of a line, a spectrum, yeah? We have the subjects on one end and objects on the other. And then we have something in between. So the way I think about it is that we have three object subject marking particles. Unnen, ul, del, and iga. When it comes to subjects, the part of the sentence that is doing the verb, yeah? When we mark it with unnen, it is going to be a subject no matter what. There is no exceptions. Unnen has no other meaning than to be a subject marking particle. So it's on this, let's say, end of the spectrum, yeah? 
Then we have the ul dul, which also serves a totally object marking function. There is no other way it can be used if you're going to use it with a noun, it is going to be an object of the sentence. So these guys are on the completely opposite sides, yeah? Subjects and objects. In the middle though, we have iga, because sometimes it can be used as an object marking particle, sometimes it can be used as a subject marking particle, so it's somewhere there in the middle, yeah? So when I think about active and inactive verbs, and sentences with these verbs, I think that when we have an active verb, it is clearly doing an action with an object. Like, I prepared dinner. I did what? Prepared what dinner? Dinner is going to be an object no matter how you move the sentence around, yeah? So if it's going to be clearly an object, we're going to use the object marking particle that is clearly going to make it an object, right? 100%. So we're going to use uh, uh. But then in sentences like dinner has been prepared, there isn't really a subject and then we don't really know if dinner in this sense is a subject or an object because, well, dinner has been prepared. Technically, it's an object because it has been prepared, but then it's also a subject because, well, dinner has. So dinner did what? Like has been prepared, you know? It's a little bit confusing, yeah? So you're not really sure if it's a subject or an object, so just use the particle that can be either an object or a subject marking particle, which is iga. I know the system might sound a little bit confusing to those who are maybe just starting out with particles, so don't get too fixated on it, but I feel it might help those of you who are fairly familiar with object or subject marking particles. So yeah, it helps me to think about it that way. My mind works in mysterious ways. I come up with really strange mnemonic devices or just any kind of systems that help me study. So if it helped you, yes, I've accomplished my goal. If it hasn't, I'm really sorry. I hope the method that the Korean from Zero guys are using, maybe that can help you. So let's just quickly go over some more examples with hada and dueda. We have verbs like yeakada and yeakdueda which is to either reserve or to be reserved. So when we think about reservations, we can either make a reservation at a restaurant, but we've already talked about food, so let's talk about something else you can reserve, and that is songs at a norebang, because Korea is all about the norebangs. So when you want to say that you have reserved many songs, or just songs, at a norebang, what do you think you use? I'm pretty sure it's going to be the yeakhada verb, because, well, I did what? Reserved what? Songs. Clear action, clear active verb needed. Yeah? So it's going to be yeakhada. And the way you're going to say it is 노래방에서 노래를 많이 예약했어요. 노래방에서 노래를 많이 예약했어요. 노래방에서 is at a 노래방. 많이 is a lot. 노래 is a song. And we use 늘 here because we have an active verb. 예약하다, 예약했어요. Because we have an active verb that clearly is acting upon an object, the song, or songs in this case, we use the 을, 을, object marking particle. Yes, it makes sense. But when we want to say that many songs have already been reserved, or they just have been reserved, we can say 많은 노래가 예약됐어요. 많은 노래가 예약됐어요. Many songs have been reserved. And here we can see that nore has a ga particle next to it. So we can see how it makes sense with an inactive verb. We're using the iga particles, yeah? So that is it for today. I hope this wasn't too confusing and you guys actually learned something. Let me and the guys from Korean From Zero know what you thought about this video in the comment section below. And make sure to like and subscribe to Korean From Zero because they are awesome and they're trying so hard to give you guys as many resources of learning Korean as they can. All right, so I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And it's been a pleasure to be here on Korean From Zero. So yeah, I'll see you guys all soon. Bye, annyeong.